Hey, what up all my two doctors and doctresses? Welcome to another episode at the Tooth Factory. Today is our second episode of the pharmacology series of lectures, dental pharmacology, penicillins. So let's get on with the drug and uh, hope you learned something new today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, penicillin time it is. So we remember from the previous lecture that penicillins are cell wall acting antibiotics, which means penicillins would act on the cell wall to kill the bacteria. Well, let's take a look at the mechanism of action. Penicillins inhibit the transpeptidase enzyme or penicillin binding protein, PBP. What that statement means is that every bacterial cell wall has an enzyme that helps it become a strong cell wall. Penicillins inhibit the transpeptidase enzyme. Therefore, they have a weaker wall. There's a pore in the wall. And that's what causes osmosis. So once osmosis occurs, there's a lot of influx of water from outside the cell that goes inside the cell. And it drowns the cell alive, causing cell death. So we talked about the bacteria and its structure. What about the drug's own structure? Well, it's made up of a beta-lactame ring and an R group. So what is the R group associated with? Well, it's a side group that is functioning the drug's stability against enzymatic or acidic hydrolysis. You know how uh, we take the pills, all of these pills go in our stomach, and right here there's a lot of HCl, hydrochloric acid in the gastric acid constituents that gets released, and it can break down the drug, making it inactive, right? Well, the R group is the one that becomes bulky, and then it fights the acidic hydrolysis, so it keeps the drug alive. What about the main component, the beta-lactame ring? Well, it's the core of the structure. That's what fights against the bacteria by inhibiting the transpeptidase enzyme. So this is the protective measure. That's the functioning measure. Perfect. All right. What about the classification? So we already talked about it last time. I'm just going to go over it real quick. Penicillins are divided into narrow spectrum, beta-lactamase sensitive. So like I said from the previous lecture, beta-lactamase is an enzyme created by the bacteria to inactivate the drug. It is to create damage to the beta-lactame ring. So beta-lactamase breaks down beta-lactame ring, making the drug inactive. Penicillins are divided into narrow-spectrum beta-lactamase sensitive, so these drugs cannot work against beta-lactamase. Penicillin V and penicillin G. The next drugs are narrow-spectrum beta-lactamase resistant. Now these drugs will be resistant against the bacterial beta-lactamase enzyme, keeping the penicillin alive, but it's still narrow spectrum. These drugs include methicillin, oxacillin, dicloxacillin. Then comes the broad spectrums, the heavy duty ones. But this group right here, broad spectrum beta-lactamase sensitive, will be inactive when the bacteria releases beta-lactamase. They include amoxicillin, ampicillin. But remember, to make these drugs strong against the beta-lactamase enzyme, we would add clavulonate to the amoxicillin and sulbactame to the ampicillin. These two agents are the anti-beta-lactamase. They're not really drugs, they're just supporting structures. And they make the drugs beta-lactamase resistant. Last group, broad spectrum beta-lactamase resistant. They are piprocillin, carbinicillin, and tipracillin. These groups can cover a lot of bacteria and they can fight the beta-lactamase enzyme. So very strong penicillins. So these are the penicillins that we uh, usually consider in dental fields. All right, let's take a look at these penicillin subgroups in a little bit of a detail. Well, in order for us to understand this whole concept, I have actually talked about the narrow spectrum beta-lactamase resistant drugs first, and then I've taken the sensitive. You'll see why in a second. The narrow spectrum, beta-lactamase resistant, they are focusing on gram positives, specifically Staphylococcus aureus. And they have a bulky R group. Now, this bulky R group is what makes them beta-lactamase resistant, remember? Against enzymatic deterioration. Bulky R group. They include methicillin, dicloxacillin, oxacillin. These are actually very strong, but narrow spectrum, only Staphylococcus aureus and gram positive only. The second group we'll be talking about are the narrow spectrum, beta-lactamase sensitive. Now, sensitive but still narrow spectrum? Well, that's got to be pretty bad, right? But wait a second. They fight against gram-positive cocci and rods. They also fight against gram-negative cocci and spirochetes. A little bit better, eh? But they're still sensitive, which means they don't have a bulky R group. 
What drugs are they? Well, they're penicillin V and penicillin G. Penicillin V is actually a modified version of penicillin G because when penicillin G was created, and of course by accident it was created, it, it could only be administered via parenteral route by injections. Why? Well, because when it would enter the stomach, the stomach acid would make it inactive. That's why the scientists created penicillin V with a bulkier R group to fight against the acidic environment. And that's why we can take that drug orally. All right. So we talked about narrow spectrum beta lactamase sensitivity. We talked about their narrow spectrum. But what do they treat? They are known to treat syphilis and they are known to prevent rheumatic fever. So treatment of syphilis and prevention of rheumatic fever by penicillin V and penicillin G. The third group we're talking about is a broad spectrum beta lactamase resistant. So this is the actual dirt work, hardest working penicillins because they cover a broad spectrum and they're beta lactamase resistant. They're heavy. They're piperacillin, carbonicillin, and ticarcillin. They treat the widest spectrum of them all. They have a higher gram-negative spectrum. They can treat gram-negative bacilli, and their second name, their nickname, is anti-pseudomonas. You know, pseudomonas was so hard to kill that they kept trying and trying, but at the end, these groups of drugs contributed to killing anti, the, to killing pseudomonas, making these drugs anti-pseudomonas. So don't forget the, the nickname here. It's very important. And they are recommended for a UTI, urinary tract infection, because there's a lot of gram-negative bacteria in that infection. Next and the last group, I saved the treat for the last because this is where dentistry lies. Broad spectrum beta lactamase sensitive. I know I said beta lactamase sensitive, but there's a twist. Wait for it. Broad spectrum beta lactamase sensitive includes ampicillin and amoxicillin, our go-to drug. They cover gram-positive enterococci, gram-negative H-influenza, E. coli, salmonella, and they're used for the treatment of otitis media, that's the ear infection, bronchitis, upper respiratory tract infection, sinusitis, cystitis, and amoxicillin is known to have a higher oral absorption, so that's amazing, higher blood levels, which means they can work for, for a greater amount, and higher half-life, which means they can work for a longer time. And they have a decrease in GI activity. Ampicillin can be taken both oral and IV. And their preferred treatment of UTI infection, which is urinary tract infection. Now, before we move on, I want to add a nudge here that broad spectrum beta lactamase resistant are recommended for UTI. And broad spectrum beta lactamase sensitive are preferred for UTI. That point is very important, especially when you're preparing for the NDEB in Canada. Now. I said there was a twist, making these sensitive drugs actually good drugs, because remember, we add amoxicillin with clavulinate. We add the beta-lactamase sensitive component with anti-beta-lactamase. So we can use all of this broad spectrum, all of this usage, and all of this quality with anti-beta-lactamase. So when we mix amoxicillin with clavulinate, we get augmentin. Similarly, when we mix ampicillin with sulbactame, we get unison. And these are North American terminologies, uh, just for the reference. So these were the penicillins. Hey, thank you so much for watching, you guys. It means a lot to us. And I hope you learned something new today. I hope these notes are helping you remember these drugs better. And we will be releasing more and more pharmacology lectures till we're out of topics in pharmacology for dentistry. So please like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos.